this is Azines for today with me, Vanessa. Timor-Leste's president says Singaporean and Malaysian investors want to invest in Timor-Leste. The Timorese president explained this after visiting Singapore and Malaysia at the early dates of December this year. While in Singapore, Jose Ramazorta met with his counterpart, Singaporean president Halima Yaqub, Singaporean prime minister, investors and some of the state entities. From Singapore, Jose Ramazorta continued his trip work visit to Malaysia, where he had met with newly elected Malaysian Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim and the King of Malaysia in order to strengthen the bilateral ties between the two countries. At the press conference, Horta said, while visiting Singapore and Malaysia, there were many investors are eager to invest in Timor-Leste in various sectors. Visit the state of Singapore, visit the private... The state visit to Singapore and work visit to Malaysia I was accompanied by some of the government officials where I had met with the Singaporean president, the prime minister and some of the ministries. The main purpose of the agenda is the bilateral relationship. My next meeting was with the Malaysian prime minister, Anwar Ibrahim, reviewing our bilateral cooperation, find a way on how to raise more investors, Malaysian investors to visit Timor-Leste, to invest in areas such as energy, maritime transportation and agriculture. After took office as the new president of Timor-Leste on this year, Jose Ramazorta has already made state visits to Indonesia, Australia, USA, Cambodia and Portugal. China provides DNA identifier equipment to PSIG to help solve crimes in Timor-Leste. China Embassy in Timor-Leste hand over 10 laboratory equipment for the identification of the nucleic acid or DNA test to the Timor-Leste's Ministry of Justice and the Scientific Police for Criminal Investigation of Timor-Leste or PCIC Timor-Leste in order to reinforce the service of PCIC and study the test case. Timor-Leste Minister of Justice Tiago Amaral Sarmento said the laboratory equipment to identify the DNA that the government of China offers to PCIC will ease the DNA collection for evidence and there is no need to send it abroad for test. The PCIC received the support of DNA test equipment from the People's Republic of China through its ambassador, Xiao Jianghua, and handover to the Minister of Justice as well as the PCIC director and head of the unit. This DNA test equipment is very important for justice matters in the court, for criminal process and investigation process. Normally, we send the DNA test to Portugal as per bilateral cooperation. From now on, the DNA test will not be sent abroad. The head of the PCIC, Vicente Fernandez, explained there has been two specialists who are going to operate and use this equipment. The equipments are all here and we just need to prepare our human resources. We already have two senior experts that can support and assist in the court case, the public ministry, especially in crime related to DNA tests. The head of PCSC also added that in the future the specialist will work together with the expert from China to learn the laboratory technique of the PCSC. They can start doing DNA tests in order to be able to solve many crimes in the future that occur mainly in the biological cases. European Union commits 10 billion euro to invest in ASEAN by 2027. European Union and ASEAN leaders met for a joint summit in Brussels as part of efforts to tighten the two blocs' cooperation. The European Union and ASEAN held their first summit to deepen economic ties, with European leaders pressing for firm, shared language critical of Russia. The leaders of 27 European Union countries and 9 of the 10 ASEAN leaders have been invited to a commemoration of 45 years of diplomatic relations. Military ruled Myanmar has been excluded. The leaders discussed areas of future cooperation including trade, the green and digital transitions and health. The two blocs have already signed a deal to allow their airlines to expand services more easily. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen committed 10 billion euros or 10.6 billion dollar of public funds to 2027 for investment in projects in ASEAN such as in renewable energy and sustainable agriculture. There might be many, many miles that divide us. 
but there are much more values that unite us. For 45 years now, indeed, ties between the European Union and ASEAN have grown stronger and stronger. And today, our strategic partnership is more relevant than ever. Because if we literally stand at the opposite sides of the world, our destinies are linked more than ever before. Team Europe is putting forward an investment package for ASEAN worth 10 billion euros until 2027. If we want to link our zones of growth, we need to upgrade our economies, upgrade clean energy, the digital infrastructure, from wind farms to solar power plants. The European Union wants to expand its trade ties beyond its free trade agreements with Singapore, Vietnam and negotiations with Indonesia, and the regional groupings are each other's third largest trading partners. The summit statement is likely also to call for calm in the South China Sea and address the February 2021 military coup in Malaysia and instability on the Korean Peninsula. Indonesia guarantees that the newly ratified criminal court will not affect tourists. Indonesia's Vice Minister of Law and Human Rights said foreign tourists and businesses will not be affected by the country's newly ratified criminal code, which criminalizes sex outside marriage. Speaking at a news conference, Edi Hiariyech said the revised laws in cohabitation and adultery will in fact prevent tourists from becoming the victims of vigilantism and public raids, which are not uncommon in the world's largest Muslim community. In a statement, Bali's governor Wayan Koster also sought to reassure visitors to the island, which is the center of tourism in Indonesia. Wayan added, Bali's government will ensure there will be no checking on marital status upon check-in at any tourist accommodation such as hotels, villas, apartments, guest houses, lodges and spas. Indonesia's parliament passed a controversial bill that also prohibits cohabitation between unmarried couples. Decades in the making, legislator hailed the passage of the criminal code as much as needed overhaul of a vestige of huge colonial rule. Officials said it aims to uphold Indonesian values in the world's largest Muslim-majority nation. Bali bombing suspect apologized to victims' family. A recently paroled Indonesian militant who made explosive use in the 2002 Bali bombings apologized to the victims of the attack and their families. Umar Patek, a member of the Al-Qaeda-linked Jama Islamiyah, was sentenced to 20 years in prison in 2012 for involvement in bombings that ripped through two nightclubs in the busy tourist area of Kuta, killing 202 people including 88 Australians and 38 Indonesians. Patek had been on the run for nine years before his arrest in Pakistan in 2011. He was freed on parole despite protest by authorities and families in Australia. Patek also pledged to help eradicate radicalism and terrorism in Indonesia. Indonesia's Justice Ministry said he will be required to participate in a mentoring program until April 2030 and any violation could see his parole revoked. A Belgian businessman said European Union and ASEAN should cooperate on the basis of equality and mutual respect. The European Union ASEAN Commemorative Summit was held on a day in Brussels, the first comprehensive summit since the two sides established diplomatic ties 45 years ago. Jointly chaired by European Council President Charles Michel and Cambodian Prime Minister Samdek Teko Hun Sen, also chair of the ASEAN for 2022, the summit focused on the issues such as connectivity, green energy transition, trade and digital transition. Frederic Paldan, CEO of Belgian consulting company CBIZ, said expanding global partnership is good for the European Union and the two sides should strengthen cooperation on the basis of equality, mutual benefit and mutual respect.
Uh, generally speaking, uh, it's always good for the European Union to diversify uh, its uh, partnership uh, worldwide and also uh, to diversify its uh, trading partners, um, especially at a time when the European Union faced several crises like the energy crisis and also the, uh, uh, the, the economic crisis like inflation. Uh, and also at a time when the United States uh, become more protectionist uh, and conservative, uh, especially uh, due to the um, Inflation Reduction Act, uh, which really uh, can damage the European economy. But uh, the EU have to um, respect uh, some additional value like uh, equality and mutual respect with these countries. Or otherwise, uh, it won't be beneficial for both parties. And uh, we, uh, I also uh, hope that the European Union won't use this uh, agreement uh, as a ge geopolitical tool uh, against these countries. In a joint statement following the meeting, the European Union and ASEAN pledged to firmly support multilateralism and work together to promote sustainable and inclusive trade and investment. The United States House Democrats passed the so-called Inflation Reduction Act in August, which contains an estimated 437 billion US dollars in annual spending, with 369 billion dollars dedicated to curbing climate change and promoting green technology. Olaf Scholz and Lee Xing Lung attended the christening of two submarines ordered by Singapore. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz and Singapore's Prime Minister Lee Xing Lung attended the christening of two submarines ordered by Singapore at the Thyssen Krupp Marine Systems in the northern German city of Kiel. In total, four invincible class or type 218 SG submarines for the Republic of Singapore Navy were ordered. The first two German made submarines were delivered in 2019. Singapore and Germany are like minded partners with close people to people ties and strong cooperation across many areas. Just last month, I was delighted to host Chancellor Schultz in Singapore during his trip to our region. And his visit reflected the excellent state of relations between our two countries, as well as Germany's strong interest in the Asia-Pacific. Today, Chancellor Schultz has joined us again to mark this milestone for the Republic of Singapore Navy. I'm honored and delighted once again, and I thank Chancellor Schultz and the German government for their support and affirmation. Scholz underlined Singapore's importance as a strategic partner for Germany's security policy. Singapore is a wichtiger strategic partner for Singapore is an important strategic partner for Germany's security policy, in addition to our intensive military cooperation. We further underlined the importance of the region last year with the deployment of the Great Bayern, Bavaria, and this year with the development of six Eurofighters. Singapore is a central partner in this and always also an indispensable logistical hub during the deployment. The submarines christened in Kiel are called impeccable and illustrious. All the girls continue to study English in Hanoi with the aim of keeping their brains sharp. Every Tuesday, a group of older girls ask students to study English in-house in Hanoi with the aim of socializing and keeping the brain sharp with the theme Never Too Old to Learn English. Even though we are old, we should try to study because studying helps the brain. And when we work our brains, we won't become as forgetful or lose our way. The informal classes are free and are taught by Pung Tin Yen, who trained as an English teacher but currently works as an office worker. It comes as a growing number of scientific studies show the benefits of learning a language to maintain and enhance cognitive abilities, including for senior citizens. Locke has never studied a foreign language before, but with her newly acquired skills, she chants in chorus with her classmates, never too old to learn English. Meanwhile, Yen says her students are working hard to learn the language. English is Vietnam's most commonly taught foreign language after having become a mandatory subject at the school in the 1990s. 
Locke says there have been moments of discouragement over the four years she has been taking the class, but it makes her happy to be able to understand her grandchildren when they practice speaking in English while doing their homework. Thank you for everyone. Have a lovely week this ahead. See you.